All right, good afternoon, everybody. Um, do apologize about uh, sending an email. Hopefully, you had all received uh, the updated link. Um, obviously, if you're on the webinar today, you have, but uh, we do send that out. So thank you for joining us this afternoon. We're going to get started um, with our webinar for today, Keys to Design-Based Lighting for New Construction and Major Renovation Projects. So um, we had uh, held two previous webinars uh, with uh, just to overview the retrofit lighting uh, worksheet previously for Pepco and Delmarva Power. Uh, this one is actually more addressed towards the uh, new construction major renovation side. Um, there is a worksheet that is in the process of being released, should be up on the website very soon. Uh, but just for projects moving forward, it's an excellent opportunity. If you have any questions, um, you can type them into the dialog box or into the message box. Uh, my colleague Jason Guy, service provider coordinator, is on the line with me. He will be reviewing those questions, and we will pause at the end of each section to um, to ask and answer the questions that you uh, that you have. We will also be sending out copies of the slides after the training, as well as a feedback survey. Uh, please be sure that you um, provide that feedback survey with suggestions for improvements. This is our first new construction webinar to look at these uh, these opportunities, so we definitely are interested in what you uh, what you have to say about it. Um, but without further ado, our agenda for today: calculating the baseline codes and methods. Uh, we're going to go over this basically how we come up with the uh, the baseline that we use to determine the energy efficiency savings and the incentive for these you know for this track. Uh, using the design based lighting worksheet we're going to just take a look at the worksheet that is to be filled out um, and how that goes so it works a little bit differently than the retrofit uh, worksheet that is used typically. We also have um, a section on actually submitting the online applications. If you haven't yet done so, we'll, we'll be sure to cover that piece so that you feel comfortable. The minimum documentation that's required as part of the application package that you must submit. And we will just go through a brief application demonstration as well at the end. All right, first and foremost, calculating the baseline codes and methods. So, it is important to start by looking at the differences between a retrofit project, which most people are probably familiar with, versus what technically qualifies as new construction or major renovation. Our prescriptive retrofit track essentially bases itself off of an existing inventory or an existing load of lighting. So we require anybody submitting applications to submit a worksheet that identifies all of the existing equipment, the type of lamp, the type of configuration, the type of ballast, and those quantities, and then also by space to, to determine exactly how much lighting load is already there, what the hours of operation are, um, and then based off of that, we determine whether or not you can meet a specific wattage reduction against the existing load for whatever measures you're identifying or proposing to replace them. Um, if you meet those requirements, uh, along with any other technical and program requirements when submitting the application, you will qualify for a specific incentive per fixture or lamp. Um, that worksheet is arranged in a space-by-space -space method. So we do look at each space on each line and generally as the easiest way of trying to put everything together. Um, and then if you do achieve on a line-by-line -line basis the wattage reduction that's required, then you would qualify for that incentive. New construction and major renovation uh, is, is a little bit different. Obviously, new construction is for a building that does not yet exist. So we're not, you know, there's brand new loads, so we have nothing to compare against, right? There's no existing to look at. Uh, major renovation may have some existing lighting load, but the idea of major renovation is that they are completely redesigning this space or redesignating this space for a different type of use. So either a brand new build out in a gutted office space that's adding new drywall, new walls, new space types and spaces, um, and kind of redesigning 
the, the layout of the facility and the lighting uh, scheme itself. Um, or, you know, you're turning an office into, uh, into retail space or turning some kind of space into a new use that requires rerunning wire and redesignating the lighting layout. Almost always requires, uh, you know, obtaining a permit for these types of projects and, and generally says, okay, well, we can't really compare whatever was there because either it didn't exist or because the new use and layout is so different from what it was previously that it's not worthwhile to compare an existing baseline with the new base, you know, with the new proposed load because it's not a really accurate representation of what can be achieved. In this case, we typically will look at it based off of the code baseline. So we determine a lighting load based off of what code says the maximum allowance is, and we'll go over how that's calculated. And based off of the total square footage and the watts reduced of the space, um, we can determine what your incentive would be. Uh, we do evaluate gross building area. So, uh, um, you know, we would look at, look at the we look at the entire building area, or we can look at it at a space-by-space -space, uh, method. So we can kind of either look at the entire building being retrofitted or, or renovated or built, or we can look at individual spaces that are being renovated in, in, in a significant way within the space. Um, and as I mentioned, there is a wattage reduction per building that you're trying to achieve versus, you know, on a line-by-line -line basis. All right, so calculating the baseline. We refer to uh, one of two codes as our baseline, as um, which are implemented in Maryland, uh, ASHRAE 90.1 2013, or the International Energy Conservation Code, uh, IECC 2015. In those codes, they determine both building level or space level light, lighting power density allowances. Essentially what that is, is the wattage per unit area for a building or for a space. So it, it kind of allows you to compare different, you know, buildings that have different gross areas, but from a, you know, from a, a standardized unit, a watt per square foot for example. Um, and then based off of that standardized unit, you can determine the amount per square foot in a given space or a given building that sets the maximum uh, you know, wattage per square foot. And that way, regardless of the size of your building or the size of your space, we can determine whether there is too much lighting load or, you know, in that space or whether it's, it's under the threshold that the code defines. Okay, the method. So I did mention building in space. When you're looking at new construction and you're looking at major renovation, you do have one of two possible paths that you can follow in order to determine what your lighting power density allowance is. There is the building area method, which is definitely um, available and preferable on the new construction side, or is definitely uh, preferable for whole building renovation since we're looking at an entire building and we can evaluate the entire load within that building. There is also a space by space area method. Um, and the space area method is typically preferred or easier to implement when you're doing maybe a partial partial building renovation. So maybe you have a wing that you're redesigning um, or, or re, you know, using in a different capacity. And so it's not the entire building and you want to just identify specific spaces within that wing. Uh, that might be preferable to use the space area method rather than using building area method since building area does kind of look at the entire building. So I mentioned lighting power density. Uh, it is a standardized or uniform measure of the lighting load, regardless of gross area or uh, of the space or of the building. And as I mentioned, it calculates wattage per a unit area. In our case, it's typically square feet. So just to get a better sense of how we, you know, how we implement this idea of lighting power density, let's say we have a 300 square foot office, so just a single space. We have four 50 watt LED 2x4 troughers. Um, those four uh, LED troughers, uh, you know, add up to be a total of 200 watts of total load within that space. We divide the total wattage in the space for lighting by the square footage, the gross area of the space, and we get 0.68 watts per square foot. 200 watts divided by 300 square feet 
gives us 0.68 watts per square foot. That is considered the lighting power density of that office. So now we have a standard ID and we can compare it against other office spaces that might be a thousand square feet or only 50 square feet um, to just say, hey, which one is most efficient in terms of its lighting load? You know, which has the lowest lighting load or which uses lighting most effectively? Uh, as a note, we do look out only two decimal places and we will round to the nearest number. So uh, 0.685 becomes 0.69. And that is important when you're trying to determine um, whether or not you are you know meeting an allowance so we do round up or down uh, and we only look out to two decimal places for our program so when we determine whether or not you're meeting code what code does is that it sets caps based on space or building lighting power density allowances i've used that phrase a couple times now for interior spaces uh, they either set an allowance over the entire building, that's the building area method. So we say, okay, this is a certain type of building, an office building, a hospital, a retail building, um, you know, a warehouse. And they take all of the different spaces essentially within that building and just lump it as part of that office or that warehouse. And they set a standard, maybe it's point, uh, you know, 0 0.82 watts per square foot for the entire building. So you might have individual spaces within the building, uh, like corridors or individual private offices or break rooms that have on an individual level a different space type allowance but we just lump them all together and say you know we'll just say in some places you'll you might be over what a space allowance would be in other places you'll be much you know you'll be far below and just kind of average it out and as long as the average for the entire load within the building is less than what that building allowance is then you're good the space area method requires you to identify every single space that's part of your project or your scope and it sets an allowance based off the specific space type and how that space is used so as i mentioned a private office has a different allowance uh, compared to an open office or compared to a dining or break room or a corridor or a restroom and when you use the space area method you have to meet um, that individual allowance for the space so they'll each be different likewise for exterior which is also covered by the code lighting power density allowances we start by identifying the space area so we have like a uh, exterior parking lot or a building facade but we actually will determine what zone uh, that space is in, that exterior space is in. Uh, we'll go over what those zones are shortly. Um, and then based off the zone, you have different allowances. The LPD determines different allowances based off the space type. So they add you up to add on from where the space uh, or the zone base is. So just to kind of cover what we're talking about very specifically, this is the code uh, you know, pulled from code, these are the lighting power density allowances. In this case, as you see, building area type, this would be for building area method. Um, just to grab a few automotive facilities. So you take the garages, the offices, the restrooms, the workshops, corridors, add that all together. They have a max allowance of 0.8 watts per square foot. When evaluating your project, you would have to, uh, you know, improve, be less than 0.8 watts per square foot. Another option on another page here, also building area, you can see offices are 0.82 watts per square foot. Uh, sports arenas are 0.91 watts per square foot. Uh, warehouses uh, down to 0.66 watts per square foot. Um, parking garages, so not conditioned space necessarily, but if you do have a building attached parking garage, 0.21 watts per square foot. So you, you see that there's different allowances depending on the type of building that we're working with here. Alternatively, if you do the space type, there are a lot more different types of spaces, and this can work depending on the space type you utilize. So, for example, you have an atrium, and then you say, okay, less than 40 feet in height, you get 0 0.03 watts per foot in total height. Um, others just go based off of the standard square feet of that space. So, 
um, an audience seating area in an auditorium, which is the first line there, you get 0.63 watts per square foot versus audience seating, lot, uh, seating areas in a gymnasium, which gives you a slightly higher allowance for your lighting load. So depending on the type of building you're in, if it's an audience seating area, you have different allowances. As you can see, for space types, there are a lot more of them. Um, and in some cases, they make allowances depending on special use type buildings like a penitentiary or, um, you know, or, or a hospital or a laboratory. So they will make special allowances uh, depending on where certain spaces might be. So a lot more uh, are offices. Would be included here. Stairwells, workshops. So these are kind of just common space types um, that that you would utilize. So offices enclosed, office open plan, so on and so forth. Retail space, workshop, and they range very widely. For exterior lighting zones, as I mentioned, there were uh, different zones. Okay, so we start with what zone are we in? There are technically five. Um, lighting, uh, lighting zone zero actually refers to completely uh, undeveloped uh, wild spaces, uh, rural rural areas. So, um, up, up, you know, somewhere completely in the middle of nowhere that, that really doesn't have any. People shouldn't have really any exterior lighting, so they don't make any allowance there. Lighting zone one is generally any rural area or national park area, state parks, forest land. Lighting zone two, which is probably the most common lighting zone based on uh, geographic area. Mixed use areas with some light industrial, general, you know, business commercial districts, you know, your strip malls, your shopping centers along a highway, um, and then re residential zoning kind of interspersed or mixed in. So, you know, a kind of a blend between commercial, residential, and some light industrial. Um, we're going to skip over three for a second and jump right to four. That's your high activity commercial districts in major metropolitan areas, as designated by local land use planning authority. Um, but basically, that's Washington, D.C., um, and maybe, you know, a few other key parts, maybe downtown Silver Spring, for example. Uh, however, um, in most in most cases, you know, throughout the Delmarva territory, uh, you're not really running into major metropolitan areas. You're probably going to be in two, or if it is an area that's maybe got like a downtown zone, but not major metropolitan, um, you know, you might be what we consider zone three. Okay, so maybe it is like a heavy business park or something like that. There's a lot of, you know, foot traffic or or main street through a town that could be considered a, a, a zone three that's not um, you know, residential commercial mixed use, but does have more foot traffic, yet not large enough to be a city. Then based off those zones, you'll see the very first section here. Um, zone one, regardless of what the space is, you will start with a certain minimum allowance. So zone one, every rural area, you have up to 500 watts that you can claim. So if I just put on, you know, Two, uh, two 200 watt wall packs on my building in, in zone one. I don't even care what the space type is. That would be within the allowance. All right. Whereas zone two, it's 600 watts. Zone three, 750 watts. And then, of course, major metropolitan areas, you have up to 1300 watts. So it's always very important to identify where you're starting. Uh, or what your what zone is, because that's your starting point in terms of what your base allowance is then it also helps determine what your additive allowance is. Depending on the space type you identify, you would add the watts per square foot. All right, and with zone, each zone, you can see that there are different watts per square foot for each different space. So parking areas and drives, driveway. So just your standard parking area in a zone one, you get 0 .4, 0 0.04 watts per square foot. In major metropolitan areas, they have a much higher allowance, three times the allowance plus. So, um, so you get 0.13 watts per square foot in your parking areas. So if I have my 10,000 square foot parking area, I would take that 10,000 square feet times 0.04 in the first case, and you know I would get my 400 watts 
added on to 500, so 900 watts total in my rural, compared to a, you know, uh, 1300 uh, extra watts. So I essentially would double my allowance in a zone four parking lot with a 10,000 square foot parking area. All right. So that's kind of how that works based off of each zone. So make sure you're paying attention to where the zones are. Um, and in most cases, you'll likely be in a zone two or a zone three. They do have different types uh, beyond parking areas. Uh, walkways less than 10 feet, you'll notice that some aren't by square foot, but actually by linear foot. Some are actually based off of the linear feet of a door width. Some are based off of just the basic number of entries. So for parking near 24 hour retail entries, 800 watts per main entry. So if you have three doors uh, at a retail entrance, uh, you get an extra 800 watts for each door that you have. Um, drive up windows per drive through, you get extra, you know, extra wattage per drive through. So you can see that there are a couple different ways of trying to calculate um, ca calculate these. We have what we consider tradable surfaces and non-tradable surfaces. So each one has its own special way of trying to uh, calculate uh, the, you know, the the allowance and the total uh, watts of lighting that you can can install at that space. If you are determining the building area, specifically for exterior, this can be problematic. Most times you're going to have site plans. Um, you're not doing major renovation. You're not doing new construction without having a site layout. So a lot of that work should be done from the get-go. Shouldn't be hard to determine your building area. Um, with exterior, it might not be as obvious. Uh, you know, you don't have a lot of major renovation for exterior area, but maybe you are running new line and new pole, putting up new poles, which could be considered, or maybe you're turning a parking lot into a sales lot or something. So there might be a redesignation of that, how that space is used. So um, if you don't have access to site plans, you can always refer to the S, uh, State Department of Assessments and Taxation Real Property Search website, which allows you to look up um you can go to that link there and it allows you to look up existing properties so for major renovation this would be uh, more more applicable but existing properties uh, by street address by prop or parcel number um you would just have enter the number of the street number and just the name of the street you don't do any suffixes or prefixes or anything like that and you can identify the property and see what the existing above grade living area is so that's what the gross square footage of an office facility or an existing building would be if you're doing a whole building renovation that's what you could enter in uh you know for for your uh square footage there you also can use a variety of Google Maps based tools to determine square footage of an existing area. These aren't as accurate and definitely not preferable, but it's at least something to start with just to kind of verify. Um, so you type in an address. find where are we oh, where'd we go there we are you can find your space if you're doing exterior you left click on different pieces of the space you want to look at and you see you drop these pins or flags you can highlight the green shaded area which is the gross area and then come down and that'll give you a rough estimate of the square footage of the space. Be conservative. I would shave off a couple thousand square feet, if not more from that, just to be on the safe side. Um, but again, one way of trying to determine exterior building areas uh, when trying to enter that information. Um, please be sure you're double checking your numbers. In most cases, you should be able to defer to site plans. All right, so just to run through a quick lighting power density example, um, how would this ultimately all come together? I get my the area of my space, uh, building or space type. Um, I have a certain, you know, I, I might have 
existing or I might have proposed. My, my proposed are going to be four and two. So I don't really care what's existing. I have six fixtures existing and I'm replacing with something new. But if I'm doing this from a new construction or major renovation, I only care about what's proposed. So for my first group of fixtures, uh, I, I have to determine, okay, the square footage of my enclosed office space. So I have 200 square feet. I add them all together. I have 204 watts of existing lighting load over 200 square feet. I have 1.02 watts per square foot is what my proposed allowance is. Is that more or less than the maximum allowance as defined by code? Well, for an enclosed office, it's 1.11. I'm less, so I am abiding by the code requirement. So in that case, I've, I've done everything I can and I'm meeting code requirements. On line two, uh, I have two fixtures in this case. Again, we take this two quantity times 30, get 60 watts total lighting load over 100 square feet. In this case, it's a 0.6 watts per square feet. Again, it's in an enclosed office. So am I less than or more greater than the max allowance? I am less than 1.11 watts per square feet. Again, I am meeting the code requirement. So you just look to see, all right, am I above or below that number? Once I add everything up together and define, you know, divide it by the total square footage, am I above or below the code allowance number? Um, you would do the same kind of process on the exterior. You say, all right, I have 10 100 watt wall packs, so I have thousand, you know, thousand, uh, a thousand watts worth of load, and then I divide that by the square footage of my building facade area. Am I above or below what the building facade allowance is for the zone I am in? And then I will be okay. All right, so um, before we jump into uh, actually filling out the worksheet, I'm going to pause briefly and see if we have any questions. Jason? Uh, we do not have any questions at the moment. Uh, but if you have any questions, remember you can enter them into the uh, chat box. All right, Jason, thank you very much. So no questions. Uh, if you do have questions, please feel free to type them in the uh, message box and we will be to sure to answer them at the end of each section or at the end of the webinar. All right, moving right along using the design based lighting worksheet. All right, here is the basic way that this works, that this is put together. Design based lighting, new construction, major renovation, not in you know you can't choose between retrofit or the new construction track it has to be new construction major renovation we have two tiers of incentive we have tier one which is 40 cents per watt reduced and tier two which is 80 cents per watt reduced if you qualify based off of determining all right if i have my hundred thousand square foot manufacturing facility I calculate my total lighting allowance, which is for a manufacturing facility doing a building area method. You would have 1.17 watts per square foot. So my total lighting allowance is 117,000 watts. I then figure out what am I proposing to install, all the different types of fixtures all added together. Well, my proposed load is 65,000 watts. Uh, and I can, you know, verify that with my fixture schedule and lighting layout, um, which I would provide. Then I can determine what the watts reduced is against the maximum allowance for that type of facility and the gross area of that facility. So I take my 117,000 watts, I subtract my proposed load of 65,000 watts, and I get a delta or savings of 52,000 watts. So I am 52,000 watts less than what the code maximum allowance would give me for a 100,000 square foot manufacturing facility. All right, so to determine tier one, I have to, I have to reduce at least 10% against the maximum allowance. So I have to be 10% or more below the maximum allowance. And I get to claim 40 cents for every watt reduced up to 20%. All right, so the first 20% of watts that I've reduced, so long as I've reduced it by at least 10%, I can get 40 cents per watt reduced for every watt that I've taken off of that max allowance load. Beyond 20%, maybe I achieve more than that, 
uh, in this case, uh, with the example, I take 52,000 over 117,000, I get 44%. So every watt beyond the first 20% qualifies for the tier two incentive, which is 80 cents for all of those watts, up to 50% of the uh, of the code allowed. So if I can, you know, the, the best I can do with my lighting, you know, my new construction or major renovation lighting project is to reduce against the maximum allowance by 50%. If I do 60%, 70%, hey, that's great. You have saved even more for your customer and they will have a very efficient building, but we will only incentivize up to the 50% of the max. So half of 117,000 watts for this 100,000 square foot manufacturing facility. In this case, I have 44% savings. So the first 20% of my savings, which will be 23,400 watts, I can incentivize at a rate of 40 cents per watt. So I get $9,360. I add that to the next uh, watt of 24%, you know, the, to, to make up the rest up to 44%. That 24% is 28,600 watts, and I can apply the tier two rate to that, which is 80 cents per watt reduced. So my tier two calculation is 22,880. Combined, my overall incentive would be $32,240 for my 100,000 square foot manufacturing facility. All right. So that's basically how we calculate. Now, you don't necessarily have to go through all this process I mean if you unless you want to try and anticipate your incentive before filling out the worksheet however all you need to do is know how big your building or your spaces are what you're installing um, and what type of building or spaces you're installing your fixtures into all right so as long as you have a proposed load uh, and quantity of, a, of new fixtures a building type or space type and the gross area of those of that building or those spaces, um, then you can enter that into the worksheet and it'll do all this calculation for you. So, the, but just to just to kind of show you how it comes to this uh, to this incentive level, this is basically the process. When you open up your worksheet, you'll notice it looks a little bit like the retrofit. You will see that you have a tool version. Currently, we this is the very first version of this tool. Um, so when this is, you know, when this is officially released, you'll see it'd be 1.0. Make sure you're, you're using the most recent version. The best way of course of doing that is to download from the website every single time before you start filling it out, but you'll have a tool version. You have a couple tabs at the bottom. There's the instructions tab, and then you have, uh, information page, lighting, inventory for interior and then if you do select exterior lighting inventory that you are doing that as part of the scope of work you will see a tab populate for exterior lighting inventory uh, to enter in that um, and those blue those three blue tabs are the tabs that you must enter in information in order to populate the worksheet the instructions tab uh, just like with retrofit lighting kind of has some general information about how to fill out the worksheet. So great re reference uh, tab for you. If you have any questions about types of information or what exactly we're looking for, please be sure to refer to the instructions tab. That has a lot of information there for you. But more interestingly, here is the, in, the information page portion of the, uh, of, of the worksheet. The way this is put together is you have a project name, you will select the building type. Again, that is critical. The project address. So even if it's new construction, you should have a basic address there for it. The customer project contact or a, you know, a company contact to discuss this project and can answer questions about the scope of work as defined. Their contact email and phone number. Um, you won't necessarily be able to populate the project ID until after you've submitted the initial application. So don't worry about that when you're filling it out. But when you do get a project uh, application number or reference ID number, you can go back in and enter that into the uh, worksheet prior to uploading this into the uh, as part of your application package. You will choose an entry type. That will be where you select building or space area method. You'll enter the total building square feet. 
annual building operating hours estimated obviously there are more specifics but if it's an office building maybe you say okay 3,000 hours per year um, if it's something that has more more uh, operating hours you can enter those operating hours to reflect you know how the building is used primary heating type for the building natural gas heat pump electric resistance however it's heated and will your project include exterior lighting if you say yes that's when you will get the exterior lighting tab to populate then at the bottom of the tape table uh, you'll see where you start to enter now this looks a little bit different general fixture inventory this is essentially where you will recreate your fixture schedule the proposed fixture schedule for your new construction or major renovation project ideally you'll have a fixture type as shown on your lighting plan it'll have a code associated with it or some kind of key you can enter that key or assign a unique one in the first column here you will give us a manufacturer and model number um, preferably it'll match the DLC model number or can or you know at least align with the fixture schedule you will enter in the fixture uh, wattage and then any kind of notes to tell us what type of fixture this might be or what you know where it's generally going to be installed so it's a two by four classroom or two by four office fixture um, or it's a wall sconce or a high bay for you know uh, for for workshop or garage area lighting general area lighting any keynotes that help us understand how this fixture is being used and you essentially just enter it for every type of fixture so in this case I enter in all my information that I can I have a type A type B type you can do as many types as you want each with the associated fixture wattage and model number I will call them, give it a special name, 2x4 trough for insert, exterior pole fixture, whatever it may be. And then, as I mentioned, critically, uh, depending on how I want to calculate my max allowance for the lighting load according to the uh, lighting power density allowances, I would select building area method or space by space method. I will definitely say the easiest way, the most straightforward way would be building area method. And if you select building area method um, and you enter in uh, some additional information, essentially you will be able to see your incentive populate on the right hand side here. When we go to the interior lighting inventory, there's a couple of ways of trying to enter this information. Uh, obviously you will have building plans and you can provide us with a either space by space uh, layout for each of the fixtures and quantities that will be installed or you can go floor by floor if you want to summarize so if you are doing a straight building area method and you have a certain type of fixture you're installing you can honestly just go all right floor one give you know you select the type of fixture that it is uh, or you, you know you assign the fixture location so floor one or if it's space by space office type you say whether it is conditioned or not and then in the, the column M uh, where it says fixture type is shown on lighting plan that's where you go and select the code the unique code that you entered on the previous information page and once you do that you'll see that it automatically populates the manufacturer model number and wattage fixture uh, or per fixture Finally, all you have to do is enter the fixture quantity. So as I mentioned, you can do this on a space by space level. If you are doing the space by space method, you'll have to do the space by space level. Or you would enter in the information for a floor by floor level. OK, so I have a warehouse section one. I could do all of the fixtures in section one, regardless of whether or not they're all in the warehouse space or not. That way you can just kind of summarize and just enter the total quantities there for that for that area. Based on that, you'll have a total wattage uh, assigned to each line, and it'll add up all the wattage and populate my incentive. And then once I do enter this information, I will have this green building method summary versus a space method summary tab populate. That's kind of like the measure code summary table in your retrofit lighting, and you'll be able to verify all of your information and in your in proposed incentive. If I'm going to be entering information for exterior building areas, 
I want to make sure again that I pay very close attention to the exterior zone and the exterior space type as we selected or indicated before. A couple of key space types to be aware of when you're entering this into your worksheet. Building facades, that space type is a building wall. Okay, so you're giving us the gross area or surface area of all the walls that you are including as part of the project. All right, so the surface areas of the wall. Parking areas and driveways, that's paved vehicle surfaces. Okay, so don't necessarily want to include grassy areas or anything else like that but definitely includes uh, any anywhere where your parking cars that will be lit, that is also paved. Building entrances and exits, entry canopies are basically in your strip malls um, where you have you know a canopy running along the front of a lot of storefronts. Those entry canopies are considered your canopy lighting, so you're kind of basing that off of uh, the, uh, the, the area below those canopies. Outdoor sales, open sales areas, is your uh, is considered the sales lot for a car dealership or other type of outdoor uh, sales or retail space where they have product displayed outside. And parking near 24-hour retail entrances are 24/7 parking lots, but generally you do have to distinguish them from other parts of the parking lot. So you might have, um, you know parking areas that are close to building doors. Yeah, obviously, we looked at the number of entrances. So if you do have a, uh, a strip mall with a set of uh, an area that is right in front of the doors, you get an allowance for all of those door fronts based off of the number of entrances there are or based off of the watts and the square footage of the first row of lighting within that parking area. So please make sure you're just accounting for some of those uh, those details. Um, there are a lot of other space types, paths, whether they're 10 feet wide or more than, uh, less than 10 feet wide or more than 10 feet wide. Um, there are security spaces, uh, for, for example, for like fire lanes. Each has its own special uh, allowance. Uh, make sure you can identify them properly. All right. When entering in the exterior, you'll notice that there are a couple more tabs here to fill out. You will select the location or assign a unique location. This is generally going to be, you don't really have a building area, right? So you do have to enter us in space by space, but there are fewer types of exterior spaces, so a little bit easier to enter. Uh, you will select the appropriate zone. So in this case, I have business limited night use residential mixed use area. So that's zone two. I will select from a drop down the uncovered parking area and driveways, give a gross dimension for my uh, space or the quantity if it's something that requires a number of quantity. Um, so this is a parking lot. I want the gross area of the parking lot. You don't need to consider just the areas being lit by certain poles. You can just give me the entire parking lot area that will be included as part of the new construction pro project. Um, and in that case, yeah, it could be up to several acres. Annual hours of operation is typically 4,000. If there's a time clock or anything else that'll be included as part of the construction, you can give us what the proper hours that will, will be set to. You will again select the lighting type based off of how you entered your information on the information page. So I have my exterior fixture for my information was the type B. It will identify the model number and um, manufacturer, and it'll also you will enter the quantity. When you scroll to the right, you will see that the watts per fixture proposed will automatically pop populate depending on the code you selected, um, the type of fixture you selected from your drop down, and then it'll tell you what all your base allowances for the zone. Um, the watts per unit, the total allowance uh, per watt. So there, my I added my gross area, my parking lot, and my allow it, my base allowance. So I have a total allowance of 3,600 uh, watts, and it'll tell me what my install power was. So how many how many fixtures did I say I was installing in that parking lot? Five at 150. So my total allowance or my total uh, load is 750. It'll tell me how many watts I've reduced against the baseline percentage reduction here you can see the 50% cap has applied 
and then it'll calculate my incentive. So uh, the first 20% at 40, 40 cents per watt reduced, I get 288 watts. And then, um, so that would be 20% of the 2850 that I did reduce. And then the next 30% up to the 50 cap, I get uh, 80 cents per watt reduced, and that is $864. So for my five fixtures, I would get $1,152 total. Okay. And then that gets added in as part of your project for the exterior. All right, so that's basically how you enter it in. It works a little bit different than the retrofit. The information page, you're entering all of your proposed fixtures and assigning unique codes. And then whether you're on the interior or the exterior, you'll select those unique code uh, tags that you, you entered from that drop down to tell us which fixtures these are. It'll automatically populate wattage. All you have to do is tell us where you're putting them and the total quantity, and then the rest will be automatically calculated. Okay? So at this point, I'm going to pause to see if we have any questions. We do have one question. Um, if you have multiple fixtures in one area, do you need to do the space by space method? It looks like their question was cut off because there's parentheses IE, but that nothing afterward. So, all right, excellent question. Um, so, if you do have uh, it multiple fixtures, different types of fixtures in the same space. If you are doing the space by space method to calculate it, you would have to have each one kind of separated out. All right. That would be critical. You know, so you're going to have to have a separate line anyways for the new fixture. If they're within the same space, you will have to indicate indicate that on the worksheet and then you'd have to divvy up the gross area of that space between the two lines. So if I do have a thousand, uh, you know, a thousand square foot open office area with two by twos and two by fours that I'm installing, I'd have to divvy up some of the thousand square feet towards the two by fours, maybe that's 700 square feet, and then the rest being 300 square feet towards the two by twos. You do get a little bit of room to play there to try and, you know, just to, to see which would help, uh, you know, meet the biggest watt reduced, right, the watts reduction will give you, but you have to cap it at what the total gross area of that uh, specific space is. When we're talking about the building area method, um, or, you know, that, that method just takes everything and compares it against the building. So you, it's less important to divvy it up that way. We don't actually care what, you know, what fixtures are in individual spaces as much. Um, what's more important is that you know, that you're adding in all, you know, the, the, we get the full quantity of each type of fixture that will be installed uh, and the full load that they represent. So we have 10 of fixture A at 50 watts, that's 500, you know, watts total, and 10 of fixture B at 25 watts, which will be 250 watts total. So then we have a total uh, proposed load of 750 watts for all of the fixtures I'm installing that's what I would compare against the gross area of the building and the max allowance I have for that building type. So if it is a building that has one watt per square foot throughout the entire building and I have a thousand, you know, the whole building is a thousand watts or excuse me, a thousand square feet, then my max allowance is a thousand, you know, is a thousand watts total. I had a proposed of 750 watts. That means I'm looking at this project from thousand watts down to 750. I've saved 250 watts reduced. I can incentivize the first 200 watts at the 40 cents per watt reduced and the, the remaining 50 watts at the 80 cents per watt reduced. Okay, so less important on building area method. That's why building area method is probably the easiest to, uh, you know, to, to follow. The only challenge is if you're doing partial renovations of wings or just parts of buildings, you kind of do have to do the space area method. The other advantage of space area method is that in some cases, you know, if you do full space area method, you can say like restrooms, for example, or certain office areas and closed office areas, if you have a lot of closed office areas within a new building, well, they get a higher allowance compared to the overall office building. So an enclosed office gets a 1.11 watts per square foot. Now, the overall office itself only gets a 0.82. So if you know that this proposed project has a lot of enclosed office space, 
few corridors, few bathrooms, few other, you know, few, few other spaces that have a lower uh, uh, allowance, then it might be in your interest to go space by space because you can increase your total allowance. That's really up to you. That would take more work um, to enter in every space and, you know, make sure you're entering the proper space dimensions. But it would be one way of, of entering that information and trying to see if you can maximize your incentive based off the space by space area method. Personally, I definitely uh, encourage folks to submit the building area method because you can summarize very easily and it's a pretty quick turnaround to be able to uh, enter all that information effectively. Okay, so I'm going to pause again. Any other questions, Jason? Um, yeah, on the application, it looked like you had to input each fixture type per space. If doing the whole building method, is there a space to just enter in the LPD and building type? Yeah, so when you enter, so we'll go back to that section real quick. So when we enter the initial information on the information page, you'll notice that we're entering the building type on the row, uh, I guess that'd be row nine, the second line in the information page at the top. And then on row 10, uh, in the second, you know, the second section, we are also entering the total building square footage, you know, total building square feet. So basically, in the back end, if you select building area method from this drop down it'll just apply this office building area allowance 0.82 watts per square foot against this total building square feet to determine my maximum allowance when you're entering the information here on the interior lighting inventory page all you have to do is enter the total quantities and so like I said you can summarize so maybe I have a 10 story building right um, I can summarize by floor. So maybe on every floor I have a type A, right? That way I say floor one, type A, 100 fixtures. Floor two, type A, 150 fixtures. Floor three, type, you know, type A, 15 fixtures. However many you're installing, you can summarize for each floor. And by doing so, it would just still continue to add up all that wattage and compare it against my max allowance based off of the information I have entered here for this type of building, okay? It's only if you go, you know, to the space by space method, would you have to enter in additional information? And then they would allow you to enter in that square footage effectively. And you do have to enter in for space by space, each different type of space for it to work properly. Now you can note that uh, for fixture, you know, location, you can be more specific. Even if you're doing building area method, maybe you want to enter every space within the building. It's a smaller building. And you just want to give us that kind of degree of understanding. That's fine. That's up to you. Uh, but anything that can help, um, you know, easy entry, uh, the, 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 the entry time frame obviously is preferable. So you can definitely just summarize um, as you see fit to be able to identify the total load. But it does give you the ability, you do have to enter each type of fixture and fixture quantity for us to get the total load that you're proposing for that building type. So, okay, any other questions, Jason? Uh, we do not have any other questions at this time. All right, well, so I'm gonna run to submitting online applications. Now this should be very familiar for you. Um, it's basically the same process as submitting a retrofit lighting application. So if you've done this before, um, you will be, you know, you'll follow the same basic process online. You will go to pepco.com business or delmarva.com business. You can find the new construction tab uh, specifically. There will be a tab added to the website very shortly specifically for design-based lighting. So make sure you're navigating to that when you're selecting your project. Um, you know, you'll select the link, select your project, and you'll find one specifically for design-based lighting. So make sure you're navigating to that specific application. Uh, however, uh, when you do select the, uh, you find the link, you want to begin your application, it'll bring you to this page here, application instructions. We'll go to the website very quickly just so you can see. You can look at the technical sheet, look at the terms and conditions, 
Um, when we do upload the worksheet, you'll see that it'll be added to this area or added to this page as well. And you begin your application, it'll ask you to log into your account, that's whatever account you're using, your account name and password. If you don't yet have an account, you can create one. You will enter first and last name, your email, re-enter email. If you don't have the utility account number, if you're maybe a customer and you don't have a site utility account number, we don't need one. Obviously, it might not be built yet, so there is no account number. Just enter a series of zeros. If you are a service provider, trade ally, um, you know, contractor, we still don't need it. Just again, enter a series of zeros and a unique password, and that would satisfy that criteria. Submit it. Now you have your profile created. When you do actually begin the application, it'll ask you to enter a unique company or a project name. But the very first section you fill out, again, facility information. Please note, we want the customer contact, point of contact's first name, customer point of contact's last name, customer point of contact's company name for the first three spaces. Do not give us your own personal information. You'll also note that there is an account number field that is a required field to enter. Obviously, you might be submitting this application before you have an account number. You will enter in a series of zeros or just a random series of numbers to satisfy that requirement. At the point in time when you have a bill or have an account number, you know, you will get a letter from Pepco or Delmarva Power, your customer will. You can scan and send us a copy of that and then we'll be able to update the application accordingly. You can ignore the premise ID, give us the address, city, state, postal code, and then again, customer point of contact phone and customer point of contact email for the facility. If there is a different point of contact for the customer as a general uh, contact, maybe there's a headquarters or a CFO or uh, you know a chief engineer or somebody else that was associated with this project, you can give us that information under the customer mailing info. Again, it's a customer first name, customer's last name and customer's company. Do not enter your own company's information into these fields. Where you enter your information is to click on the search for a contractor button. You can type in uh, a letter or two that begins your company name, hit the search button, and then when you find it, It'll populate all the companies. So if I just type in a B, it'll give me all the B companies that, that begin with B. You will select your company by selecting this magnifying glass over the, over the paper. That's the way to actually populate the contractor or the company submitting the application for the customer. When you, it'll be some additional information you enter about the project. Um, let us know that information, whether you're, it's a lead project, whether you're going to track it with Energy Star, um, expected date of completion, so on and so forth. But you enter in the information, submit your online application, it'll take you to this landing page. You'll notice down in the left-hand corner, you have one new task. I will select the new task. That will take me to the page where I have to upload all of my supporting documentation. So my screenshots for cut. Uh, for uh, you know fixtures I will install from uh, DLC or as applicable, my cut sheets which are necessary, the terms and conditions, and there also will be um, an option to upload the worksheet that I just showed you how to fill out. Okay, if you're uploading multiple uh, copies, for example, of the cut sheet, please note it only gives you one opportunity to upload. So if you're doing that before you do, you know, uh, before you upload it. Go into your files, highlight all of the cut sheets, right click, send them to a compressed or zipped folder, and then upload that folder into, uh, into the application package to satisfy that criteria, that, uh, that request. Um, once you upload it, that task will go away and you'll only get to do it once. So if you have multiple cut sheets to upload, you don't want to just, you know, you'll have, we'll have to flaw it. It'll take longer. So make sure you're uploading them as a compressed folder. When you are ready to submit everything, you will select this complete task, all documents uploaded, submit for processing. Okay, that's then pushes the whole package through. Okay. Required submission documents. We typically do want a fixture schedule and a, a space layout if you can provide it. However, if you do go space by space, 
for your fixture schedule within the worksheet, that is sufficient for us if you're going to do every space within the worksheet in, uh, to, to, to identify the fixture schedule. If you're summarizing, please provide us the fixture schedule. Um, give us the cut sheets, design, uh, DLC or Energy Star screenshots, and of course the customer signed terms and conditions. All right. We're going to just do real quick. Oh, no. Nope. What happened in my application demonstration? We've got about a minute. If I want to enter this information, you can see uh, I enter the information as I want. Uh, I see I have test. I have a project ID. I would select my building type, exercise center, for example, enter in my address, my contact, icf.com. 718-4886. Does it include exterior? Yes. Natural gas, 4,000 hours, 25,000 square feet, building area method. I type in my space types or my fixture types based off my schedule. as many as I want. So you can see why I do type A, just one. I go to lighting and scroll up and there's my type A. If I select it, it populates. If I go and add a type B, and that one's 45. There's my model number. If I scroll up here, I now have a type B. Okay, so you just kind of keep entering in all of the fixtures you're proposing to submit, and that allows you to populate your worksheet. All right. Any final questions, Jason? Yeah, we have a couple questions. Um, are, incentives, are incentive programs either or? For example, if we submit for the lighting incentive, does that prevent us from submitting for another type of PEPCO incentive? So they are not either or when you're talking about different types of technology. So if you have a new construction project, you do have the ability to submit for the lighting, new construction opportunity or major renovation. And then if they're doing a new chiller system, you, there, you can submit the application for the HVAC or for the chiller. Uh, if there are VFDs associated with the HVAC system, you can submit for that. Um, if there are any other type, types of equipment, maybe their kitchen equipment, um, you can submit for any applications and different types of systems. Each customer or tax ID is subject to a million dollars per calendar year cap in the incentive that they can claim. Okay, so there is a cap in, the, in each calendar year that they can actually claim. However, if, um, you know, within each different types of system, they're allowed to submit multiple applications for the same new construction project, okay? There is also a comprehensive or a custom new construction path as well that you can submit for, for unique aspects about the building. Maybe there's a demand control ventilation system or building energy management system that's being installed that can also qualify. In terms of new construction lighting being either or, compared to retrofit, that is not something you can choose between. So if a project is a retrofit for existing building, you can't choose between, oh, I could get more money going new construction, major renovation. No, it has to be classified as a new construction, major renovation project to qualify for that track. So you can't choose between retrofit prescriptive incentives versus the new construction, major renovation. And if you have a new construction, major renovation project, likewise, that can't go through the retrofit path, okay? Because you have no existing load to compare against per se. So yeah, you do have an either or there, but not for um, different types of systems. Alrighty. Um, another question. Do you require a COM check to be submitted with the application? Um, we don't require a contract per se. We don't need anything uh, in terms of like an initial contract between the customer or anything. Okay, so it was actually just notified to me that it was a COM check report. Um, it's always a good idea to have a COM check report. We may request one uh, if we don't have enough uh, 
identity uh, within the worksheet itself to identify everything. But as of right now, the ComCheck report is not a mandatory submission requirement in every application or uh, submission that, that we receive. So uh, that is not a mandatory minimum requirement for the application package at this point. Uh, do you require the lighting to be approved on DLC or Energy Star to qualify for the incentive? We would seek to uh, maintain that they are DLC or Energy Star listed. However, we do understand that there are some performance or niche products, um, bollards or other types of equipment that may not necessarily be on DLC, so that may not be a minimum requirement as well. We would we would treat that on a case-by-case -case basis. All right, uh, follow-up um, from the either-or question. If you're doing a whole building energy model with multiple measures, does that prevent a project from being uh, submitted for a lighting incentive? No, so even if you're doing a whole building model with multiple incentives and multiple opportunities, if you want to apply for an incentive, you can choose which pieces you want. Obviously, we would encourage you to claim as much incentive as possible. So if there are other efficient uh, pieces of equipment being installed, there's no reason not to submit those applications. But if you just want to pursue a lighting track or a chiller incentive, you can do that on a on a you know each unit or each piece of equipment basis. So there's no requirement to submit every opportunity up front for every new construction project for um, individual pieces of the scope to qualify for an incentive. If you are doing a comprehensive project, then we would look at everything together and look how those interactive systems actually do perform and save energy against an entire building energy code uh, performance rate. So that's kind of where we would evaluate the entire building at that point. But there's no requirement doing a comprehensive project if you're looking at multiple systems. Uh, when are applications due? On new construction, do we submit during design or only when the construction is complete? So we need to receive and pre-approve all applications prior to installation of all proposed equipment. So for new construction, as long as we get the application, it's pre-approved before the lighting equipment goes in, that is totally acceptable, either ideally before any lighting equipment is actually purchased for the project, okay? However, if we're talking about a major renovation project, for example, it is okay to begin demolition of existing equipment prior to receipt of pre-approval. As long as you haven't purchased the new equipment to be installed, the new lighting equipment to be installed, and begun that installation work itself, then you are eligible to submit the application uh, and get pre-approval. So just don't start any of the installation or purchasing work until you've gotten pre-approval and you will be uh, eligible to receive the, uh, the incentive. Uh, those appear to be all the questions that we have. All right, excellent. So just a few final notes. We do have a couple of uh, upcoming events. Uh, we do have a trade ally meeting. It'll be in the morning uh, from 8 to 10.30, we have one in Delmarva Power on September 27th next week in Salisbury, Maryland. Um, that will be at the university. If you're interested in registering for that, please contact me. Likewise, we will have one for the PEPCO territory in Greenbelt, Maryland, again from 8 to 10.30. Uh, if you are interested, contact me and we can get you registered. So um, we do want to encourage as many trade allies to come out. You'll have a chance to meet ICF, Lockheed Martin staff, um, program managers, as well as some PHI uh, program managers um, who are overseeing these programs. Our replay of this session will be October 3rd. Uh, so we will do that um, the morning of October 3rd. So we will send out invites. If you haven't yet received one, you can still register for that. We have an advanced lighting solutions pr uh, training on uh, for PEPCO on October 25th in our ICF Rockville office for Delmarva Power on October 26th at the Ward Museum in Salisbury. And then finally, we'll have a custom measures training for PEPCO on uh, November 8th in our ICF Rockville office and in Delmarva Power on uh, November 16th at the Eastern Shore Conservation Center in Eastern Maryland. So be on the lookout for those invites. They will be sent out it's probably about one month before the trainings are actually uh, uh, to, uh, scheduled to take place. And uh, yeah, we definitely encourage you to participate. 
If you need to contact us, you can reach me, uh, Chris Barham, the Outreach Manager for Mechanical Systems, or uh, our new Lighting and Appliances Outreach Manager, who specifically deals with lighting contractors, distributors, installers, Jocelyn Grower. Her contact information is listed here. And also, Jason Guy is our coordinator. He's doing a lot of the day-to-day, -day, answering your calls and emails, and so if you have any questions about the program, he's an excellent resource for you. Also, here are all the program general contacts, so PEPCO uh, and Delmarva Power phone numbers, uh, and also the PEPCO uh, and Delmarva Power contact emails for each of the different programs. You can always, again, refer to these in the slides, which we will send out after this training. With that, we thank you for joining us this afternoon uh, for the Keys to uh, Lighting Design Basics webinar. Um, we look hope that you join us again in the near future. Otherwise, have a great rest of your day.